let me let me explain this first. Start with this. The offensive coordinator is the head coach of the offense. The way that James Franklin as a head coach runs this system, he delegates a lot of responsibility. Is that a good thing or is, a, is that a bad thing? That's up for debate. And I'm sure we can continue to have this conversation, but that's not the point here. Mike Yursich is the architect of this offensive system. Was, was, right? Was the architect of this offensive system. So he has all the control. He has all the say. James Franklin has influence, but he co-signs a lot of stuff. He backs off and says, Manny Diaz, that is your defense. Mike Yursich, that is your offense. So what did Mike Yursich do for the past three years? He built a pro-style offense that had elements of RPO because Sean Clifford was a running quarterback, but then those RPOs carried over to Drew Aller as well, and it wasn't a full pro-style passing offense, like an NFL type of offense, even though they did go under center from time to time. However, Penn State's next move to go get an offensive coordinator is going to be very interesting. It's going to be very telling. Do you make a decision based on your personnel of who you already have, which I think is the right thing to do? But that's going to be difficult. So J1 Sider coming in as the offensive coordinator temporarily under the assumption, right? Or Ty Howell. Well, I think they'll work on the offense together. But as far as calling plays, I anticipate that that's J1 Sider's job. J1 Sider's a, a running backs guy. He's not a, a, a bona fide, a long, long time quarterbacks coach. He works with the running backs. So are we going to see an uptick in? I'm not saying that J1 Sider is going to totally scrap the passing attack in favor of Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen, but there's definitely going to be a more dominant, run heavy type of system. I think we're going to see more success out of Singleton and Allen towards the end of the season here. I really do. In, into the bowl game as well. That's going to be fun to watch them ha break the long runs once again, and that will be the influence of J1 Sider. But Drew Aller didn't come to Penn State to be a quarterback that hands it off. He has too much potential here. So is Penn State going to move forward with somebody who is a run first, more of your traditional Big Ten, or are they going to look to somebody that mirrors what Mike Yersich was trying to do? They're not going to find a Mike Yersich 2.0, but I'm saying do you find somebody that has more of a quarterback and a passing background, or do you go with somebody who's ground and pound like a Sharon Moore at Michigan? Right? You got to kind of pick your side. Do you go with a running type of offense, run first, or do you go with a pass first because you have you have talent at both spots? But I'm saying I'm thinking because you brought in Drew Aller and people that more that mirror more of the pro style system right now in the present, that's who your offensive coordinator should be. Is this the right move? Mike Yersich getting fired. The, ju the jury's still, if you see success, yes, it's the right move. But Drew Aller, this is, my, this is my bigger point, because in the age of the transfer portal and NIL, people are going to start contacting Drew Aller, Bo Crabula, Jackson Smolik, and Ethan Grunkmeyer. What do all four of those quarterbacks have in common? They had really good relationships with Mike Yersich, and part of the reason that they're at Penn State or committed to Penn State is because of Mike Yersich. James Franklin is one of the best at recruiting, but the coordinators do a heck of a job as well. Drew Aller was being recruited when Mike Yersich was at Texas. I'm not saying that Aller would have went straight to Texas to, to be their quarterback at the time, but he has a long-standing relationship, and players commit to their coaches along with the system. So this is something to keep an eye on. Where, how does Drew Aller feel about this? Because his relation with, relationship with Mike Yersich, even though he wasn't developing the way that we thought he would, is still very tight, very close with Mike Yersich. If another big program takes a chance on Mike Yersich, do you think that's going to stop Mike Yersich from trying to recruit any of these quarterbacks in the age of the transfer portal? Again, I am not here to say and ring the alarm that Drew Aller is hopping in the transfer portal immediately. But you have to wonder what can happen from this. So it seems good in the moment, right? This, is it, this isn't a knee-jerk reaction. It was supposed to happen all along. But there are other things. If you can, look, if you can build the offense back better, if you can go get somebody that's going to compliment Drew Aller, for his time at Penn State, then yes, this is the right thing to do, and you started the process early. 
or this can get really ugly if you're not able to keep everyone happy. I hope this doesn't alienate the offense. Like I said, it's interesting that this came in the middle of the season. It is interesting towards the end of the season, right? I say in the middle, but in the midst of them playing football, they all got to go to practice this Sunday, right? They go in for their Sunday night practice. James Franklin's got a press conference tomorrow. Mike, it's not like Mike Yersich was hated. People, people liked him, but the results weren't there. When a C, when a C, uh, CEO isn't taking the business where it needs to be, you make a change. The board gets together and they make a change. In this case, the CEO of the offense was not doing well. We'll go back to the comments. I find this one interesting. Come on, Zach. Aller's happy feet aren't the coach's fault. Uh, it can be. It can be. You're supposed to be able to work on that. Uh, that's uh, that's part of it is a confidence issue. Part of it is also a technique issue, but it's not why. I mean, Drew Aller, kind of when he has a clean pocket, he delivers the football. So some something there was some sort of disconnect there. Zach James Franklin is part of the play calling. He can step in according to him. That's true, but I'm saying that these guys are the head coaches of the offense. Mike Yersich at the beginning and at the end calls the plays, designs the game plan. James Franklin, J1 Sider, Danny O'Brien, all those guys ha have the influence. But this is Mike Yersich's offense. I this the the jury's still out if this is the right move or not. But we need to talk about possible replacements.